when a problem makes no sense in your life, when you, you know, do you ever have all these obstacles come and you're like, Lord, I'm doing this right. Lord, I'm doing that right. Lord, I'm serving you. And, and all hell breaks loose. That ever happened to anybody here? <laughs> Well, that's a spiritual thing. You know that the enemy's coming against you. You know that he's trying to get you to back down. He wants you to settle back. Well, I, I don't want to rock the boat. Well, you're rocking the boat. You're saved. And so you might as well learn how to stand and war. Warring is standing on your word. When people say we don't war, that's nonsense. <laughs> we war. We have to contend for those things. We pray and we contend. God is raising up a new level of intercession. He's calling the men and women to rise up. We are not going to be complacent any longer. It's for every one of us. If we're not engaging in the word, in worship and praise and, and decreeing the word and coming out to prayer, he needs us. And we're the catalyst that brings forth that transformation. So uh, Romans, um, that is on one of the handouts there. Romans 8, there you go. It says, for those who are living according to their flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, which gratify the body. But those who are living according to the spirit sets their mind on the things of the spirit, his will and purpose. Now the mind of the flesh is death, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace, the spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God, both now and forever. You see, there's war. War between our flesh and our spirit, right? And so, but it's saying, but when, you're, when your mind is set on the things of the world or your flesh, which gratifies us, and, and it's death. And so I'm not going to teach about the fear of the Lord today, but I, I really am working on a whole series on that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom, and the fear of the Lord is the reverential awe of Holy Spirit. And it's more concerned about what God thinks versus what you think. And, you know, here's the thing. I mean, so many times, you know, it's like, well, I don't want to offend the people. Well, I don't want to offend God. And we have got to get to this place. Well, Lord, what does your word say about this? And that doesn't give you the right to be mean and disrespectful to people. It's not what I'm saying. But what about the spirit of the Lord in your life? And so I said, Lord, just show me my heart because we all have blind spots. Show me where I'm at. A lot of times you know, but other times you don't know. But show me where I'm at. I want to have a good character. I want to have a godly character. And Lord, but I don't want my flesh to control how I'm going to respond to you. The spirit of the Lord says that with God, nothing shall be called impossible. The flesh says, you're going to believe this nonsense? You're going to keep believing this? This lady is crazy who's speaking this stuff. Or you know what? You can live. You don't need to um, live a holy life. It's okay to have sex outside of marriage. I mean, come on. Oh, you know, all kinds of, of alternate lifestyles are fine. It's okay. No, what does the word of God say? And the reason for it is for our protection and to help us and to not have emotional soul ties or soul ties that we have to cast demons out of people after they've had partners. And, and God's not condemning. God is saying, look, my way is better because I, I, I want to give you hope. And I want to give you an understanding that you can live a peaceful life. You can live a life of joy even in the midst of your problems. Because we, we have problems at times, right? And so, you know, we have to choose to set our mind and think. Um, to choose to set our mind and think on the word of the Lord. Not, and Because and, the way we think and the way, what we meditate on determines our outcome sometimes, if you understand that. So if you're always going to think, well, you know, I'm always going to be sick or I'm always going to have this issue or I'm always going to have that issue, you have them. <laughs> you won't have breakthrough or greater faith. And that's the thing. Like, I know where I need increase. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants to bring increase. But, like, let's look at this. Let's look at marital issues, all right? So when you're in the thick of it, it's hard because neither of you want to give in and, and, and it's hard, and your hearts are both hurt. But God says that, that he can restore all things. He's a God of restoration. He can bring healing into your marriage. It might not look like it then, 
But as you both are choosing to, to submit to the word of God, which is to humble yourself, which is then to uh, abide by the word, not, not cuss each other out, not fight with each other, and, and do whatever God's asking, even though it can take a little bit, God brings restoration. We have seen it over and over and over again. I had a couple come to me, and they said, you know, the husband didn't even want to come, and I was surprised when he showed up, and he said, it's, it, it's no use because nothing works. I said, do you ever go to Christian counseling? Uh, you know, do you ever have anyone take authority over anything in your life? And he said, no. And by the time of this, this meeting was so supernatural, by the end of this, this session, if I'm talking about the power of God and calling upon Holy Spirit to come in and, and, and do an intervention in this marriage, God broke through. They were hating each other. And by the time they left, they were kissing. I said, hey, hey, you know, I'm in the room here. <laughs> Like, give it five minutes, you know, let me leave now, you know, get a room, do something, but not here in front of me. But they were just getting like, woo. And so that's the spirit of the Lord. He breaks through, I'm telling you. Holy Spirit does it. She's going to have a busy schedule coming up with that anointing. <laughs> it's happened more than once, too, just, just saying. But, but I just love the way the Holy Spirit creates that, that fertile atmosphere where he can shift things and cause things to birth, where you felt there was no hope, where you felt there couldn't be a breakthrough in your marriage, or whatever your situation is, that's God. I don't know how he did it. He just, it's like supernatural how he does the things that he does.